play sports for a living, Woo. so that's fun. Uh, but I'm going to talk today about uh, a part of me that I, I, I like to write out poetry, and this Ow. poetry is in a fashion that is rooted in apologetics. And what apologetics is is it's a it's giving people a reason, the hope that I have within me, yet with gentleness and respect. So. Hope you guys like it. Can I take a seat, please? The what? I take a seat, please. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Do you need one of the chairs from down here, or do you want to do no, the stool? No, dude. Thanks, man. <clears throat> so, and because loveless, lawlessness is multiplied, I'll say it again, and because lawlessness is multiplied, most people's love will grow cold. Matthew 24, 12. Why apologetics, Ben? Well, multiplied causes must be examined. Several questions to be suggested. Cross-examining little is a minimalist thinking mindset to me, and it might seem puzzling that every ethic knit into our body gives meaning to morality. Or are you proclaiming racism is ever holy and worthy of praise? Of course not. That's insane. How could it be? Is sexism correct or incorrect? Is Jesus being resurrected truly leading men towards freedom or not? Our leaders don't say it. Is Jesus being resurrected? Why did so many people die for this? This belief. Is the skeptic and warrior sight of Benjamin tribes ever intentionally righteous, disrupting satanic obstacles of lofty and sensual goals? Lovers of the world speak experiential things with music, like God knows my heart and loves and loves me. This ought to be a scary thing to, to say and verbalize, and yet we've normalized it in our culture. God was called holy over 400 times in the Bible, and He loves us. How do we know He loves us? Well, because He died for each living soul. We need warmth in the war that we feel, not cold. Under the influence of Satan, we might, we might even plant our own image on God and decide how He ought to be, saying, I know He loves me. This is wild unless you recognize your specific wilderness that you're in and is atonement for sin, but we don't chase the thorn, it finds us, and we say it too fluently with our mountain peak seekings. Our artistic freedoms and the corrupt thoughts of what liberation truly means. See, all the previous kings of God's omniscient stories, or else we're going to be selfish to explain away anything. Like how Solomon never seemed to feel at ease while complaining from guilty feelings, this brokenness over sin will lead to repentance, and it, doesn't, it didn't kill a righteous king. David understood his sin as a vertical offense, and he was justified under the sun, just as if he's never sinned. Why him? Why not everyone? This brokenness over sin will lead us to repentance, it says. Yes, even pride. But the carrier of a seed, nation, and covenant, otherwise post-regenerate atoms, we'd be so quickened by a Holy Ghost to forgive and turn our cheeks towards the restful side of peace. But truth, by definition, is exclusive. I say it again, truth by definition is exclusive, and thus Jesus picks the puzzle piece for me. I love everybody. That's why I sing these things. Origin, meaning, morality, and destiny. Where do I come from? What is the meaning of my life? How do I differentiate between good and evil? Where will I go when I die? Sin is pride, and evil has been misunderstood in the hearts of men and women for centuries. Give me a peace pipe, I'll show you a king. Is he good because he carries an external peace? Even the religious leaders did this. They thought they were shoo to heaven. But Jesus showed them their heart. His intentions were pure, not only copper and kingly, but of a prisoner of war. The soldier who suffered under Potiphar's wife, Joseph, dreamed things twice in Genesis 37. Think about why. Why did he dream it twice? Were his dreams merely thoughts? Who gave him his dreams? Was God truly the dreamer and he just a dream? Certainly to flee from what discomforting might feel like, God never plants doubts in our hearts. However, we surely always stop defending our clearest unholiness after hitting the rock at the bottom. Hell now is very good. It means heaven for eternity.
In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in spirit and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and the prudent men, and you have revealed them unto babies, unto babes. Even so, Father, for it seemed good in thy sight. That's from Luke chapter 10, verse 21. Jesus makes a man decrease, and he increases. This is what John 3.30 says. And I'm not religious, I hate religion. But I have a relationship with God. And that's enough for me. You see, if you knew my suffering, maybe you would question more about me. Or maybe we would look at Jesus more seriously. Who was he? Was he just a man? Or was he the king of kings? This is what I challenge you with as an apologetic man who loves the truth, who's been changed by the truth. I skated after a hockey culture for a long time. I skated with the grinning, and then Jesus put a stop to it. He showed me his face. And now, all I want to do is spread a message of hope. Because I really felt hopeless and meaningless in my life playing the sport that I love. And God is only good. He's only good. And I don't say that with any skepticism in my heart. There's a difference between a skeptic and a saint. And thank you for believing in not only humanity, but in the reality that maybe religion is a place to, to gather us brothers and sisters. And I love you all. Thank you.